He had faith in us, and this is manifest in one aspect of the matzah. Perhaps this is the manifestation of the matzah that we say, matzah zushan ochlim, shenemar vayofu es habotek asher hotziu mimitzrayim. We baked the cakes as we left Egypt, and they couldn't rise because we were in such a hurry. God took us out of Mitzrayim bibihilu, in a rush. Why? Because he took us out because he believed in us. That's the first aspect of matzah. The, the hemnusa, the emuna that Hashem has in us creating a meaningful world. But there's a second aspect. Whose emuna is it? It's our emuna. Matzah is a symbol of our faith, our emuna na Kaddish Baruch Hu. The emunascha balelos, it's either your faith in us, or maybe it's our faith in you in the nighttime when it's dark, when we're on the verge of despair, when we suffer. We ate matzah, according to the beginning of Haggadah, halach ma'anya da'achala avasana ba'ara de Mitzrayim. We ate the matzah while we were slaves in Egypt. We looked to our future. We had emuna in Hashem while we were still there. How do we see this? Chief Rabbi, Sir Lord Jonathan Sachs, Shalita, the Chief Rabbi of Great Britain, he points out that this is the story of Masko Beginus, Umesayim Beshevach. The Haggadah is bracketed. It's coupled with beginning of the negative elements of our story, of the sadness, of the despair, of the sorrow, and it concludes with the Shevach. Why? Because, says Rabbi Sachs, the point is to emphasize that even in the Genus, we were able to see the Shevach. It's incredible. Could you imagine that while the Jews were still in Egypt, Hashem tells us we have to remember why Laman to Saper Ba'oznei Vincha Uben Vincha. You should remember one day you're going to ch- tell your children how you left Egypt. You know, it's easy for him to tell us that after we left. But to think that we're told that while we're still in Egypt, Laman to Saper, don't worry, believe me. And we said, yes, we believe in you. Perhaps that's why we eat nothing after the matzah. What do we say to the Chacham, to the wise son who asked the question? What is this all about? We say to him, Ein maftir an achar pesach afikomen. You don't eat anything after the Pesach, which today is matzah. Why? Says the Talmud, because you want the ta matzah befiv. You want to be able to taste it. You want to have that feeling. What's the feeling? We want to have the feeling of faith, of closeness to Hashem that's symbolized by the matzah, but both directions. On the one hand, it's the matzah of geula, that Hashem believed in us enough to redeem us, even though we were low. But on the other hand, it's the matzah of Shibud. It's the matzah of affliction in which we still believed in him. We maintained our identity as Jews with the hope of redemption, even though things were bleak. We had emuna, and that's what we put on the Seder table. And that's why when we tell the story of the Haggadah, Megale Hamatzos, we open up the matzah, because the matzah is our testimony. It begins with the Maschil Beginus. The matzah is open when it was bad. We had faith then. And then the matzah is open when we conclude, because Hashem, He had faith in us. When I was a kid, there was one section of the Haggadah that was so boring and so endless. At least it seemed endless at the time. And that's the section of the Haggadah that begins with the words, Say ulamad, go out and learn. It's the quote from Parshas Kisavo of the Torah describing the bringing of the Bikurim, the first fruits, and the recitation of Arami Oved Avi. Arami Oved Avi is the paragraph that was said by the farmer when he brought the new fruits to the base of Mikdash, to the temple. And he recounted the history of the Jewish people from their exodus to his day of bringing the first fruits. So now why we say Arame Oved Ovi, that I can understand. Because Arame Oved Ovi, it's not just a story of the exile, but it's an accent on gratitude. And gratitude is an essential component of the Seder experience and our relationship with Hashem. I got that. We need to say Arame Oved Ovi. But then there is this ridiculously long exposition of every word of this passage. Arami Oved Ovi Vayered Mitzrayma, Vayog Arsham Bimsema Ot. Our forefather Jacob went down to Egypt and he lived there, Vayog Arsham 
b'msei ma'at, few in number. And now there's an exposition. It says, Vayagar sham, so we learn it was only Vayagar, it was only to visit. Melamed shelo yared lehishtakea. He didn't go to stay permanently. Then we look at the next phrase, b'msei ma'at, and we explain that. Vayishom legoi, and we explain that. We go for dozens of lines through these few sentences in a massive exegetical exercise. Why is that? Well, what this is, is medrash, midrash, interpretation, rabbinic interpretation. For what we have is the static text of the Torah Shebuch of the written text. That's the paragraph of Arame Ovidovi. And then the rabbis amplified it by looking at every line and reading between those lines. Because the, to the Torah is a divine document with many layers to it. So we take those layers and we parse them. And we find that every word and every letter has meaning. So I understand the significance of the relationship between the written Torah and the oral Torah. But why does it have to be here in the Haggadah? Why is it so important that we spend so much time working out all the details of meaning of these verses? What's that all about? So perhaps there are two levels of explanation. The first, I heard the name of Rabbi Joseph B. Soloveitchik. And that is that Midrash is the crux of the oral Torah. You see, the written Torah is static. It doesn't develop. But the oral tradition, that it changes and it develops. And there is a certain continuity of generations that continues to expand in the tradition. See, because the rabbis had spe special tools in their toolbox, rabbinic tools, different modes of looking at the text handed down to them from Moshe Rabbeinu. And in every generation, the great scholars of that generation look at the text and they try to see using their various tools. They examine it to try to figure out what is the added layer of meaning. And sometimes that will change from one generation to the next in the times of the Mishnah or the times of the Talmud. That process, that's called Torah Shabal Peh. That's the oral Torah. Well, the oral Torah, that's handed over from generation to generation. That's very much what the Seder is all about. At the Seder, we say, we tell our children. We get our children around, and we tell them the story of our history. But the story is not a written log. It's something that we tell over. We've got to say it from parents to children, to grandchildren, because it's about passing the tradition from one generation to the next. If it's true on the level of story for the Jewish story, it's all the more so true in terms of the tradition of Torah, because it's not just about handing over a book, here, read this. It's the connection of the generations through the tradition of understanding, the tradition of interpretation. That's the Torah Shabbal Peh. That's part of what we are handing over to our children and to future generations every year at the Seder. That's why it's so important.